Shalom, and welcome back to Expert on the Spot. My name is Professor Chaim Cedar, and I'm a professor in the, in the Department of Developmental Biology and Cancer Research at the Faculty of Medicine of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. First of all, there's a question from Shira, who asks, I may be asking the obvious here, but what exactly is the role of gene regulation in cancer? So, Shira, this is a very good question, and because most people don't think about this, but the key to cancer is actually gene regulation. Because even though the cancer itself is probably initiated by events that impact on us from the environment, the properties of the cancer cell its ability to divide rapidly, its ability to invade other places, its ability to, be, to metastasize, all of those properties are determined by the genes in the cell. And the reason why the cancer cells are doing that is because they've been reprogrammed to do something different than what they normally do. In other words, their gene regulation program has been changed. I have a question from Ari. Ari asks, my father passed away from colon cancer. What are my chances that I will also get cancer? Am I predisposed to it? Are certain cancers more genetic than others? Ari, you're asking a complicated question. I'm going to try to give you a simple answer. There are some forms of cancer that are clearly genetically derived. Some of us have genes that directly predispose us to certain types of cancer. So a percentage of people who get colon cancer have those genes. A percentage of people who get breast cancer have genes that make them predisposed to breast cancer. And the same is true for a number of other uh, cancers that we know about. In addition to that, there are general genetic effects that can predispose to cancer, probably at a lower level. So some people, and we don't know how to identify them today, some people, their genetic makeup is such that they're more, uh, they're easy, they, they, they are more uh, protected from cancer and other people are more prone to cancer from a whole bunch of different reasons that have to do with the way cells function. So the answer to your question is yes, a lot of, our, uh, uh, of the cancer incidence has to do with genetic background. Sometimes it's direct and sometimes it's less direct. It would be very difficult for me to answer your question your specific question about you in relationship to your father. But probably anybody who has a parent or a close relative who has gotten cancer, they have something in them that makes them maybe a little bit more predisposed. I just want to add a note so you won't be depressed about this, is that we know today that there are many things that we can do in changing our lifestyle that can alter these predispositions. We don't know all of them, but we know some of them. I have another question here from Noah. Noah asks as follows. Aside from radiation, what other therapies are scientists experimenting with in order to treat cancer? Uh, Noah, we're in an age now where uh, there is a lot of experimentation, a lot of progress in the treatment of cancer. Up until about 15 years ago, the main treatment of, of cancer was by radiation and by chemotherapy. Both of these treatments work in a very nonspecific manner. What they do is they kill cells that are rapidly dividing. Since cancer cells are rapidly dividing, they're more susceptible to the treatment. But the treatment also affects normal cells, and that's what gives, what, when, that's why these people who get these treatments also have side effects. Okay? But over the last 15 years, scientists have developed 
a whole bunch of new approaches in, in which they can target specifically cancer genes, cancer cells, without affecting normal cells. The idea behind this is that through basic research, if you can discover what's different about the cancer cell from the normal cell, you can then design a targeting therapy that will specifically target the difference in the cancer cell as opposed to the normal cells. And we now have a whole slew of treatments that are based on this idea. Most of these are not cures, but almost all of these prolong life by a large amount. And in fact, because of this development, it's been said many times by doctors who work in this field that it's slowly converting cancer from a fatal disease into a chronic disease. And we see that in a lot, a lot of different tumors. I have a long question here from your own. It seems that some cancers have a genetic basis. Breast cancer seems to run in my family, with, while others can be caused by exposure to certain chemicals or radiation. What is the interplay between these two? Is cancer mostly genetic, or is it due to environmental causes? Yaron, this is a complex question, and, but I think we have the general outlines. We know the general outline about how this works. So it's generally accepted that to initiate cancer, to start the process, usually requires some sort of um, insult from the environment. It could be a carcinogen, it could be something in the air, it could be uh, from radiation. The, almost every form of cancer is probably started through some, something that comes from the environment. But on the other hand, the human body has a, the ability to withstand many of these insults. And every single one of us has a little bit different ability because of our genetic makeup. So some of us have a very strong ability to withstand these things, to fix the errors from the insults of the environment. And others of us have, have a less, uh, ability, less ability to do it. Okay? And indeed, whether a person gets cancer or not, and what kind of cancer he gets, is really an interplay between his environment and his genetic makeup. There's a question here from Gil. Gil asks, do you think that in the future a DNA or biotechnological development will cure cancer? Uh, Gil, uh, this is the kind of question I like because um, I'm a very optimistic person. And I think that, yes, the future is very bright. And I think what it depends on mostly is our ability or the ability of society, of society or the willingness of society to invest in basic research. The more basic research that we do, the better we will understand the interplay and the causes and the interactions within the cell that are involved in cancer. And once we understand the really basic aspects of it, I believe it'll be pro possible to design an approach that will not only cure cancer, but may even be able to prevent cancer. The real, uh, <clears throat> the real goal of medicine is not to cure diseases. The real goal of medicine is to prevent diseases. And I believe that we can do that. And just to give you an example, one of the things that happens in every cancer cell is that many, many genes undergo a chemical modification. And this chemical modification louses up their program, their gene expression pro program. And this plays a big role in making them cancerous. Now, this change occurs in every cancer. So it's something very, very, very basic. 
So if we can design a drug against this change, it'll have a much bigger influence on cancer than anything we've used up till now. Nava asks, if certain parts of the cells are turned off according to DNA methylation, is there any way to turn them back on? Uh, yes, the answer to that question is yes. And indeed, this kind of treatment, or this kind of approach, is being used today. Uh, we know that every cancer undergoes D DNA methylation, that it affects a lot of genes, and that the effect on these genes is what gives the cancer cells their cancerous phenotype, their cancerous properties. Now, there's a drug that works against DNA methylation. The drug has been known for a long time. It's used for specific cancers, and it reverses the process of methylation okay, and partially cures the patients. Research over the last couple of years has shown that in the past, we've been using this drug wrongly. We now know that it should be used in low doses and that it should be, can be used even as a preventative measure against cancer. So there's a lot of hope that a drug that can reverse the process of DNA methylation may be very, very useful in treating a wide variety of different tumors and maybe even preventing them. Adam asks a question about basic molecular biology. Does every cell in the body contain the DNA for the entire person? Or do different cells contain different pieces of DNA? So Adam, this was a question about 30 years ago, or 25 years ago. This was a key question, because people really didn't know the answer. And they thought that the differences between cells was because some cells had more of one gene, and some cells had less of that gene or some cells had more of another gene and less of some other genes. Today we know that that's not true. Every cell in the body has exactly the same genetic makeup, exactly the same genes, and the differences between different cells of the body has to do with the regulation of those genes. Whether those genes are read, whether those genes are used, or whether they're turned off. And that explains the differences between different tissues and different cell types of the body.